Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking 3D stretchy text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. So I'm just gonna run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 seconds. Just press okay. Once you have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a text layer. So I'm just gonna write my text uh, in there and I'm going to just highlight it all. Maybe I'll change the size a little bit and I'll just increase the size in between uh, the letters. I've made it all caps. The font that I'm using is Mission Gothic and the color that I'm using for this is going to be this gray from this color palette. So once you're happy with your text, then what we need to do is we need to align it to the center of our composition. Then what we need to do is we need to click on that text layer and if we go to layer, create, create shapes from text, now, if I drop down uh, this little content panel, I can see all my letters in there. So I'm just going to highlight all of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for path and then I'm just going to hit the stopwatch for every uh, character that I have in there. So now I can press U to pull up all my keyframes. I'm going to move forward in time uh, one second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight those paths again. Now this time I'm gonna press uh, V for the selection tool and I'm just gonna grab this whole area here, hold shift and grab that area there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this proportional grid and I'm just gonna hold shift and drag this down to about there. And I'm gonna do the same for the top. So I'm gonna highlight all of that and I'm just gonna bring that up to about there. So now I have the text, you know, going up, stretching up, and then it will also stretch down when I copy these keyframes and I put them over there just like that. Cool. So now what we need to do is we need to fix up the easing on these keyframes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the graph editor. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to highlight all of these uh, keyframes over here, drag that to the middle, highlight this one, drag that to the middle, highlight this one, drag that to the middle, and then highlight this one and also drag that to the middle, just like that. Cool. So now once you've done that, now the text moves up and down and there's a little bit of acceleration and that looks pretty cool, but we're gonna make it look a little bit better. So the first thing that we are going to do is I'm just gonna copy these two sets of keyframes and I'm just gonna go to, let's say four seconds. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight all of them again and I'm just gonna fix up this uh, section over here. And all I have to do is just move that across uh, just like that. And now I have uh, acceleration and deceleration on each one of those keyframes. So what we need to do now is we just need to offset these by about three frames. So if I just move forward, say one, two, three, and then if I repeat the rest for the other layers, and that looks pretty cool. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to duplicate that layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press Command D to duplicate it. And I'm just gonna call that layer stroke. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a stroke to that layer. So I've gone back to color hunt and this is the color I wanna use for the stroke. So all I have to do is go on that layer, click on that color, add the color in, and then just increase the stroke to whatever size that you like. So I'm gonna use 10. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some drop shadow. So if we search for the effect called drop shadow, uh, we change the opacity to 100. We go back to color hunt and we use the two colors that we didn't use before. So I'm gonna start with this uh, dark maroon color and I'm just gonna increase the distance to maybe something like 15. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate that again and I'm just gonna add another color in there. So I'll just add the next color and I'll change the distance to let's say 25, something like that, maybe even 20. And there we have it. So now we have the text, you know, with the kind of 3D effect. And I think that's looking pretty cool. 
So the final effect that we are going to do in here is we're going to add another adjustment layer. Cool. So now once we have the adjustment layer, the effect that we're going to use on here is going to be bulge. And what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the taper radius and put that to 100. We're just going to put the quality to high. I'm going to pin all edges. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move forward until my animation has everything uh, revealed. And I'm just going to draw a little radius around it. Now, obviously this is way too much. So I'm gonna drop that bulge height to about 0.3. And there we have a little bit of a bulge happening. So that's cool. So now what we need to do is we need to go to layer pre-compose and I'm just gonna call that text. And now we can work on the background. So now for the background, I needed to download this uh, paper texture. So I just downloaded this from FreePick. Cool, so now once you dragged your texture in there, just duplicate it three other times. And then what I'm gonna do is highlight all of them, press R, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to rotate them. So this one is going to be 90 times two, and then this one is going to be 90 times three. and you will see when we put it all together, this will all uh, rotate around. So once I've got all of that, then what I need to do is I need to highlight all those layers and I'm just gonna move forward in time, let's say about six frames. So there's five, so there's gonna be six. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Command, Shift and D to cut that. I'm gonna press Delete. And now I have those um, four layers there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all those layers and then I'm gonna go to animation, keyframe assistant and then go to sequence layers and then just press okay. So now I have those four layers that are going off in the background and that looks pretty nice. So now what I need to do is I need to pre-compose those layers. So if I go to uh, layer pre-compose, I'm just gonna call this uh, paper. Now I will have that as my background, but I need it to loop. So to make this loop, what I need to do is I just need to right click, go to uh, time and then go to enable time remapping. And now you've got this uh, layer at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move back one frame. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit that uh, keyframe button over there and just delete the last uh, you know keyframe there. So now that I have that, all I need to do is I need to hold option, click that stopwatch and you can see this play button over here. If I go to uh, property and then just go to loop out and now that background will loop out for the entire duration of that composition. So now once we have that, then the next thing I need to do is I need to duplicate that layer and I'm just gonna rename this to matte. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my text layer and I'm just gonna put that down here and I'm gonna change the track mat setting to matte. But I'm also gonna click this uh, Luma mat. So now you can see that the mat has kind of taken away uh, some of the text. So what we need to do is we need to add some curves in here. And for this, I'm just gonna bump this up to you know, maybe you can play around with some of these settings. So how much of that paper texture do you want to be revealed in there? So I don't want too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to maybe play around with something, something like that. And then once you're happy with that, then we can move on to the next step. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate that paper layer again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to rename this to displacement map. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my text layer and I'm gonna add a displacement uh, map effect. I'm gonna change the uh, displacement map layer to the our displacement map layer. I'm gonna change the source to effects and masks. And then I'm gonna change the max horizontal and max vertical displacement to 40. And so now we've got that really kind of rough look and you can play around with some of these settings if you don't want it to be as crazy. For example, if you go to 20 and 20, all right, it's a little bit um, you know, less, less crazy, but totally up to you. I'll probably leave it at that. Also on here, we are going to add some more curves. And for this curves effect, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna bring this down slightly so it's not so, 
kind of vivid. So maybe I'll just bring it to something like that. And now we have that cool kind of texture that goes off with the rest of the background. The next thing that we need to do on here is we need to add some roughen edges. So I'm just going to change a few of these settings. The border is going to be 4, the edge sharpness is going to be uh, 10, the scale is going to be 40 and the complexity is going to be 10. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold option, hit that stopwatch for evolution and I'm just going to write posterize time. I'm going to put in our six frames and then I'm going to press enter and write time times 100. So now if you've done that correctly, now we will have a cool kind of growing of uh, those edges on the sides. So I think that looks uh, pretty cool. So the last thing that I did is I just took the eye off the displacement map. We don't need that. But on the paper layer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold command and double click this ellipse. Um, button over here and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this in slightly so it's going to be something like that all right and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press F for feather and I'm just going to increase that feather something like that so you can barely see it on the outside and so now we've got that kind of texture layer just kind of sitting on top of that. But because we've done that, then what we need to do is I'm just going to put a background uh, layer in and I'm going to use the gradient uh, ramp effect. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to color hunt and I'm just going to pick on that gray color. I'm going to replace that with the white. I'm going to change it to a radial ramp. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change these uh, endpoints to something like this Then press uh, swap color. And so now you can you can play around with how much you want, you know, the background to be. So I'm just going to leave it at something like that. And so that's pretty much the text effect done with the paper texture in there. The final things that uh, we can do to kind of dress it up is if I add an adjustment layer and the first effect in here I'll add is some noise. So for example, if you want to, you know, maybe make it a little bit darker or, you know, you want to change it up a bit, I'm going to go with a simple S bend, maybe something like that. The next thing that we can add in here is I'm just going to add another adjustment layer and I'm going to add noise. So I'm really going to dial this noise up to about, let's say 15%. So now I've got that cool kind of noise and grit that goes on there. And finally, the last um, adjustment layer that I'm going to put in here is going to be exposure. So on exposure, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change some of these values. So I'm going to change the exposure to 0 0.1 uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option and click on that stopwatch and I'm just going to write wiggle and then what I'm going to write uh, 30 comma let's say um, negative 0 point let's go to something like that. And so now if you've done that correctly, now there will be some wiggling with that exposure. And so, yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. So I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.